Hey there, it's Jimmy again, and welcome back. Today we have something interesting, dating from 1981, a Toyota Celica hatchback or liftback. Um, these are pretty interesting, so let's take a look. But first, if you like what you see, please do subscribe and like, and we'll keep making these. We feature cars and trucks, SUVs, and whatever from all over the world, just kind of whatever strikes your fancy, always as found in the junkyard. And we walk all the way around them, look at the inside, engine, back, what have you. Um, so yeah, let's take a look at this. This is, like I said, an 81 Toyota Celica. This is a second generation Celica, and this is the post facelift model. So this one was, um, actually 81 was last year, the second generation. Uh, these were released in 77 for the 78 model year. And actually these, as opposed to the first generation ones, were actually designed in California. California's uh, uh, Cal-T Design Center in Southern California. Um, these were available in both a notchback and a hatchback, and they came in ST as well as a GT trim. Now, the engines were the same between the ST and the GT. Uh, other markets got a bunch of different engines. We mainly got the 20R, which was a 2.2 liter. However, for 81, that got bumped to the, 20, uh, the 22R, which is a 2.4 liter engine. So, uh, kind of a one year only deal. And then obviously the next year, the shape changed quite a bit to a much more uh, angular square shape with the, um, uh, well, with the third generation Celica. Uh, this one's, yeah, it's a little beat, obviously. Uh, obviously served its uh, owner quite well over the years though. I mean, got what, 41 years out of it? Uh, in a very period metallic brown color. This is kind of interesting. I mean, what one of the things when these first came out, they um, were released with round headlights, and then they got a new grill and the square headlights for the uh, the facelift. Going around, it's a pretty swoopy body. It's not not bad at all. Uh, it's definitely grown on me over the years. I did not used to be a big fan of this, but this is uh, considered one of the nicer Celicas actually by most people. Uh, the lift back was big, left, left uh, gave a lot of room in the back, and these were pretty competitive. I mean, I, originally they were supposed to compete against Mustangs and Camaros, but the, you know, the Celica was never really uh, that powerful. So it, it, it kind of competed against the lesser engine ones of those. But I mean, it was Toyota, right? So super reliable, great resale value, lasted forever, and uh, very well built obviously made in Japan. This one, I believe, actually is a, gosh, it's hard to tell. I think it was a GT uh, with a five-speed, which is kind of cool. These came, uh, I think, for this year. They usually had a three-speed automatic, and this year you could get it came with a four-speed automatic, or they always came with a five-speed manual, which is rare. I mean, at this time in 81, lots of cars are still being offered with a four-speed. So, but, you know, going back to to the body here. These uh, uh, have this obviously very wide B pillar here. It adds a fair bit of strength. A big, long rear end. The back was maybe a little on the high side, but not terrible. Don't you love these louvers though? I mean, these were just all over the place in the 80s. Um, pretty cool that it was still here. I like the big taillights with the amber section, which is nice. Big black rubber bumpers that always kind of faded though in all the different Toyotas that had them. Fuel filler flap, unleaded fuel only. Chrome door handles. There would have been a Celica badge here that's missing on this one, sadly. Mirrors on both sides, which was also not something that was uh, totally standard on everything any, uh, these days. So let's... Uh, Let's take a look under the hood, though. This is where the Celica, what it is. Celica, Toyota always did these interesting things with badges. They had badges with symbols for most of their car lines, and the Celica got one of them as well. Um, but here we go. Here's the 22R engine. Like I said, 2.4 liter inline four cylinder, uh, rear wheel drive. Pretty conventional, but man, these engines are legendary. They last forever. This one's still pretty complete. The carb's still there. The air cleaner, it's laying around here somewhere on the ground. I thought I saw it a minute ago. But uh, yeah, not bad. Everything's made in Japan. 
the vacuum hose info, emission control information, obviously. It's a big deal in the early 80s. These, I mean, I've driven a few of these and they were, they were solid cars. They just, they went, they were torquey. They weren't the fastest things on the road, but they were, they were solid. Um, you know, they just, they felt like they were a quality piece. And, uh, well, and they certainly were actually. So pretty interesting, just a strut front suspension there. Then there's, oh, someone took the rear axle on this one, but not much rust on this one pretty good we're in the desert southwest here as you can see we have a fantastic view love this junkyard it's one of the better view junkyards uh, that i've gone to love how it's kind of on the hill so definitely an industrial section of town but on the hill here is nice too bad the window is broken but uh let's take a look at the inside obviously a two-door Built by Toyota in December of 1980. So, yep, definitely 1981. This is actually, you know, you know what's impressive? Early 80s and late 70s Japanese fabric upholstery did not last. And these seats are in exceptional condition for seats of the era. I'm guessing this car is probably, well, it probably was not garaged. I mean, look at the, the paints oxidized quite a bit on the roof. But, I mean, usually this stuff would just absolutely fall apart. Um, a note from someone doesn't matter. This uh, big steering wheel. Oh yeah, that was the Salica logo. Here it is, right way up. Kind of a swan type looking thing. Somebody's ripped out parts of the dashboard. But everything was super quality. Good quality fasteners, good quality wiring, and clips and so forth. So I had the AM FM up there and then the uh, Fujitsu 10 cassette stereo uh, unit down there is an option. You had the uh, cigarette lighter, ashtray, HVAC was right there. Stick shift would run there, obviously, or the automatic. Had a pretty big stick, as I recall, and a very positive shift action. It was nice. You did sit kind of low in these, but as I recall back then. But, you know, thinking about it now, maybe you're not that low after all, but the dashboard is almost an American style where it kind of angles out towards you. You can see it more over there. Not quite the total cliff-like thing of like a older Mustang, but definitely a little higher than say in a Honda or something of the same era. Let's look at the back seat here. See if I can get this. There we go. Well, there's the back. Not a ton of room, but once you're back there, you're back there. There's the center console. Here's the, uh, oh yeah, this is the trim piece that went around the gauges. So this would have fit in here. That's in pretty good shape. That's pretty hard to find at this point, I'm assuming. Well, I mean, these, you don't see these in junkyards very often anymore anyway, but uh, pretty impressive. There's the center console where the stick shift boot would have been. Rear seats folded down, which is cool. And you know what, actually I see this speedometer, but let's go to the passenger side and check that out. I just had the frameless doors here. Uh, trying to trip over everything. And let's see if we can open the passenger door. There we go. All right, so let's see. You had gauges here that would have gone right there. So what do we have here? We have oil pressure, voltmeter, fuel and temperature, if that makes sense. And then this is the tack speedometer, odometer, and it's only five digits, so it's 53, 364. Who knows how many times that's gone around the uh, the old dial, but uh, yeah, not bad. At least it's still here. There's the glove box. Does that open? Yep. Let's see. Uh, not a huge glove box, but decent. What's in here? Ah, Norelco Speed Razor. Somebody, somebody maybe shaved during the commute. Who knows? And a piece of mail here. So obviously manual windows that still work. Got the door locks, all non-power manual, obviously, but in good shape. Little reflectors there for when you open the door at night. Let's open the uh, the back. Too bad the yard here kind of trashed the tailgate. 
but that's what they do because they have to open it all up. So here's the back. He had a full size spare tire. Then decent cargo room. Not the deepest thing, but certainly competitive with everything else of its day. This is a decent sized coupe, I guess. But yeah, that is it. The 1981 Toyota Celica. Very cool. But um, like I was saying, if you did like what you saw, please do subscribe. There should be my little icon in the upper left-hand corner. Hit that, and it'll take you to the subscribe place. And uh, if you like what you saw, please do hit like. And uh, if you want to leave comments, leave those too. And you know, every once in a while I make a mistake. So if there's something you know that I didn't, please correct me or let everyone else know. Anyway, thank you very much for uh, coming with me. Check out the 81 Celica. Thank you. Bye-bye.